Well, I have to say that was a big win with the charger. And now that that thing's all finished up and gone, we can move on to some other projects like our Buick Regal here. That thing's been on the back burner for a while, but we got the exhaust all plumbed up recently. It's time to move on to the plumbing under the hood. Now we got several systems that we're going to terminate today, like the induction and the cooling. And when we get both of these done, it's going to get us a huge step closer to having this thing on the road. We just got to get a few bolts out of the way here so we can get this intake manifold out. What we're going to be swapping to is this modular mid-rise intake from Holly. It utilizes a dual quad, dual plane base plate, and then with a couple of A adapters, well, it converts it over to an EFI setup. First thing we need to do is install our O-rings on the base. Eagle bolts. Oh man, look at that. Let me get some hardware. Take. You know, it's not too late to go with a couple of 750 double pumpers on you. Man, that sound pretty sweet. Got a torch spec? Yes, sir. First step is 50, the next one's 106. All right, thanks. Once that's done, we can set our wrench to 106. With our base plate torqued down, I need to put in our gaskets and then I can put in our mid plate. I'm gonna have to line everything up. It's not very complicated. I say this thing's starting to look pretty cool. Now we need to torque it. Left two. That's it. All right, now we just need to get this O-ring here in the groove. And what's nice about this is it just sits down in the groove and when we put the hat on or the lid to this intake, the clamping force of those bolts holding that thing on will what keep this thing sealed. After I get the gasket in place, now I can drop on the lid. I'll be using a little lube on the bolts and install them by hand before I torque them down for the first time. Well, I just finished the first sequence of 75 inch pounds and I'm gonna go to 130. It's really important to follow the manufacturer's specs on something like this, not just the torque spec, but the torque sequence as well. Another thing you'll notice is they've got the bolts coming in from the bottom. You may wonder why, and that's because Holly's very specific about how they want their product to look, and that's just one small thing they do to make it look nice. The next thing we're going to install is our belt drive system that we got from Summit Racing made by Billet Specialties. Now from where you're sitting, you may be thinking that this is a bit intimidating because there's so many pieces to the puzzle, but in all reality, if you follow the instructions, it's really not all that hard. It comes with a 140 amp polished aluminum alternator and a nice and shiny AC compressor. The first step to getting all this installed is putting on your harmonic balancer. You making any progress, Gus? Yes, sir. I got that factory water pump and this balancer out of the way just for you. Well, I appreciate that. Now, whenever you're doing something like we are here, swapping out our balancer, one thing you want to keep in mind is you can't reuse your factory bolt. And we're swapping ours out with one from ARP. If you're doing repairs on a late model vehicle, say from 08 and up, reflashing the computer tends to be something you send to the dealership to get done. Well, not anymore with Matco's Maximus Flash Plus. This little box right here plugs into the vehicle's OBD2 port using this cable, connects to the battery, and accesses the internet through this ethernet cable. Once all connected and online, you simply request service from Matcoat's factory certified technicians, and they take it from there. This will save you those dealership costs, which in turn saves your customer time and money. Y'all stay with us. Street Regal gets a high-end cooling system and one step closer to lighting the fires. Power Nation is brought to you by Rock Auto. 
Well, we've got our belt drive all installed and now it's time to move on to getting our cooling system mocked up and figuring out what we're going to do for our air intake tube. For our induction system, we went to Summit Racing and got a universal kit that has several different bins, filter, and some brackets in it. So I'm going to grab a couple parts here and we can get started. There's a couple things you want to keep in mind whenever you're plumbing your filter, and that is your filter location. You don't want it so close to the headers or the radiator to pick up excessive heat, and the other one is moisture. Now, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is place this thing about right here. That's a good central location, and then run the tube over to our throttle body. I am going to cut out this lower part of our inner fender so that it can give it a little bit more fresh air, but I'm not going to drop the filter so low in there that it can pick up wheel slosh. So first thing I think I'm going to do is cut this piece of pipe off about right there so I can slip my filter on. Now what we're fabbing is kind of a universal setup, but it's technically a cold air kit. And what that refers to is it's pulling a cooler, denser charge from outside the engine bay into the engine. With all that done, the next thing we need to do is locate where we're going to install the boss for our mass airflow sensor. Now there's a few things in our application that we have to keep in mind. One of them is it needs to be 10 inches from the throttle body. As far as the orientation in the tube, it needs to be from horizontal up to vertical. As long as the connector is in that position, you're fine. And also it needs to be in a six inch straight piece. So about right here to do the trick. Tubular man. You're an idiot, brother. What are you doing? Working on taking this thing off so that I can weld it together, make it one piece. Probably gonna need that welder later. All right, I'm gonna leave it on for I'm you. I'm gonna work on radiator hoses. Sure. Now with what he's working on, let me paint a little picture for you. Stroll into a parts store and you tell them what you got. 85 Buick Regal. They're then gonna ask you, what size engine you got? You say 525 horse LS3. They look around at the keyboard, look back at you like you're dumb. Uh, we don't have any upper radiator hoses for that thing. Guess what you gotta do? Make your own. And that's where these right here come in. All this stuff we're using is AN-20 that we got from Earl's. And these fittings screw right into the bungs on that aluminum radiator we got from Frostbite. Another reason we're using these is because these are really nice and high end and it's gonna match the theme of our build. Now I just need to get these ends here and figure out where they need to go. Well, this all looks like it's gonna work out really well. Just need to loop that lower hose down. We'll get to that later. And this upper hose here is headed in the right direction toward the water pump. But the problem is we've got this end right here that's an AN-20 and the pump itself has this slip on bung for a regular radiator hose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little fitting right here and it needs to weld on here and that's gonna solve our problem. But I've gotta get that water pump off in order to get this welded on. So this entire belt drive system has to get removed. We're going to use our Lincoln Electric Precision TIG. It's great for welding aluminum like our intake tube. Now I need to cut a hole in this tube before I weld the bung on so that the mass airflow can slide into it. Weld, weld, weld. That oh, looks yeah. good. Thank you, sir. Hey, while you're all dressed up fancy, do you mind welding this on here for me? Yeah, I guess if you put that on. Sure. Don't touch it, it's hot. Oh, thanks. Well, we got that bung welded on and I went ahead and reassembled the belt drive and Tommy made us a radiator hold down bracket right there. So now all that's left to do is make some hoses. We're using Earl's Ultra Pro hose and fittings. They're light and designed to withstand harsh environments, vibrations and high flow requirements. Plus, they're quick and easy to assemble. These things will keep our LS3 cool and happy. Man, oh man, aren't you fancy. Oh, thank you. Well, that looks pretty good, too. Well, we gotta have some filtration, you know what I mean. Yep. And I'll tell you, it sure is nice finally making some progress on this old girl. I know, we're getting close. We can do a fuel system and some ignition and we can fire this thing up. I think you're putting a cart before the horse on that one, buddy. Yeah, and we ain't even broke the horse yet. Not at all. 